they switch, uh, while they switch the slides, I will just, you shouldn't touch that for other speakers. It will fall off the podium. Um, I am very glad to be here, Art, and thank you um, to the amazing partners here in Colorado, as well as the NASA team that partnered to organize this amazing event. It's really phenomenal to see um, us be able to uh, scale up the amount of folks we're able to have here uh, and really the quality um, and the scope of the content that we have through doing this through a partnership. So thank you all very much for your hard work here. We're, we're very, very, very pleased to be here and to see the great results. Um, so before I get started, because I know people have been sitting for a super long time, I'm going to ask uh, those folks in the room who have, who have at least a phase one award to raise their hand on the SBIR. Okay, great. How many uh, people have greater than five SBIR awards? Okay, now for all the folks that have only had like one or two for the next question, look around and pay attention to who answers the next. Who's had greater than 10 awards that are in the room? So keep your hands up, because for the people that have had one or maybe trying to get one, these companies have had great success in the program. So you might want to try to talk to some of the other folks in the room that have had great success in the program previously. How many folks have not yet won a phase one but are interested? in participating in the SBIR program. This is great. So this is the diversity of the types of attendees that we wanted in the room today. And we designed this event actually be, to be for all of those types. So we have content over the course of the next two days that are focused on helping people that are looking to be more successful in the application process for SBIRs, as well as for folks that have already won one or five or 20, figure out how to be more successful in transitioning their technologies, both for NASA use which is frankly really exciting, but also for broader commercial use, because uh, there's a number of different tracks for how technologies actually take shape uh, and are released in the wild into commercial products, and we recognize that they all take very different paths. So part of the purpose of the next two days is to explain to you through storytelling and also through bringing a bunch of different customer types and program types in front of you to show you that there are many different types of paths. There is not just one path to, get, to further your technology and further your business model. So we wanted to bring that diversity of content to you over the course of the next couple days. So Steve, thank you for that amazing overview. I learned a whole lot during that time. So thank you for doing that. And Therese for drilling down um, to specifically what we do in the Space Technology Mission Directorate. Um, as you may have derived from their talks, we have four mission directorates in NASA, human exploration, aeronautics, science, and space technology. I work in the Space Technology Mission Directorate, where Therese is the deputy AA for, for programs. And SBIRSTTR um, is the program that is focused on small businesses, not only for STMD, but for the agency. So STMD is the steward for the whole federal, the whole agency within NASA for the SBIR program, meaning we have content, aeronautics content, science content, space technology content, and HEO content in our solicitation. We manage and steward this, uh, this program for the entire agency. And what is it that this program is seeking to accomplish? Really, we are the program that small businesses get their entree point into research and development, funding opportunities, and NASA partnerships at the agency. We provide a basically a funding set aside every year for the last 36 years. So to make that very, uh, to reemphasize that, for 36 years, NASA has had an SBIR program. For 26 years, we've had an STTR program. And we'll talk a little bit more about the difference between those two things. But this is a reliable source of funding for R&D for small businesses and entrepreneurs that a lot of other countries have drooled at for years because it's a way to support our industry and our ecosystem where you guys have a reliable source of funding and a predictable source of funding that you can go to every year that relates not only to NASA's interests, but also um, broader uh, industry needs. And in fact, in recent years, the EU, Australia, um, a number of different other countries are actually sp sp spinning off programs like SBIR uh, in order to try to support kind of their small business ecosystem more in the R&D space um, within their countries. So the difference between SBIR and STTR, um, this is the beginning of a lot of acronyms that you guys are gonna hear over that you've already heard a ton this morning, but over the course of the next two days, SBI, both of these programs, you have to be a small business to apply. Um, with STTR, the difference is that you have to partner with a research institution in order to apply. And at NASA, what that means is we see STTR projects as being slightly earlier stage uh, that have a, uh, an intent to try to transition uh, early stage research from lab to market 
uh, from universities into small businesses with the intention of commercializing them. So you may notice when you look through our solicitation and you see STTR topics versus SBIR subtopics, STTR subtopics tend to be a little bit earlier stage uh, and uh, on the TRL spectrum, on the technology, on technology readiness level spectrum. Um, to put some numbers around this, we uh, roughly over the last few years have spent about $200 million a year on this program. That's the second largest program within the Space Technology Mission Directorate. The only one bigger than us is TDM. Magda's telling me to slow down. I know I talk very fast, especially when I'm excited. Sorry, guys. Um, the, uh, we spend roughly over the last few years about $200 million a year. Is that better, Magda? Okay. You guys can also go like this or like this. If you want me to speed down or slow up, I will try to respond. Um, and uh, TDM, what's their budget annually? Over three, uh, over 200. It's over 200, but under 300. And they fly big technology demonstration missions. That stuff is expensive. So this is just to show to you that we are actually a significant chunk of money within the Space Technology Mission Directorate. And as so, we are a priority of the Space Technology Mission Directorate, as demonstrated by Therese being here, a number of other STMB folks being here, and Steve um, coming to speak this morning. Over the course of the last 36 years, we have also awarded more than $3.3 billion to SBIR and STTR. That's a lot of money that we are awarding um, through this program as well. All 50 states at some point have won an award, including Puerto Rico. 1,200 firms over that time have participated. And all of our review and evaluation happens internal to NASA. So when people are looking at your proposals, those people are NASA scientists and engineers. So when you get a debrief, when you get feedback back on your phase one or your phase two proposal, that is coming from NASA subject matter experts and um, engineers and scientists. So part of the value of applying in some ways is the feedback you get back on your technology idea um, that comes back through your debriefs um, in the program. But we are not the only SBIR and STTR program within the federal government. And one of the things I'm very, very happy um, is uh, on the agenda for this this next two days is actually several times for you to hear from other federal agencies that participate in the SBIR and STTR programs. Because we may fund 100, that we call them subtopics, but they're basically problem statements. We write up problem statements that the agency has. We've, we have about 100 of those. You have to pick which one of those you're gonna apply to, which you think your company and your technology relates to. But we're only one of 11 programs. So all these other folks have other problems that they're asking for small businesses to solve. Usually a company will kind of pick one agency to start with because we all kind of have different processes, get used to it, and then maybe go for a second. You'll see a lot of similarity in who people apply to. A lot of people apply to NASA and DOD, for example. Um, uh, but every program has slightly different rules, timelines. So this morning, actually, right after I'm done speaking, I'm going to invite up uh, some other agency representatives, and we're going to get through, we're going to go through a discussion at a high level so you can start to understand the differences between these, these agencies as customer. Because your choice of who you want to work with and who you want to apply to is non-trivial. Um, very, very non-trivial. <laughs> um, so we wanted to give you a little bit of the insights across agencies as well, not just specific to the NASA SBIR program. You'll also be able to hear much more deeply from each of them tomorrow afternoon, where they will um, talk more deeply about how they think about commercialization and infusion for their agencies. Other programs, you've heard a lot this morning about other things that NASA is looking to do. Well, we're not the only customer out there. In fact, Mark Davidson, where are you? I steal a quote from him. Um, he says that, uh, and this is so good it stuck with me, so I'll say it slow <laughs> so it sticks with others. Um, that when you think of NASA as a marketplace, NASA as a customer, usually we're a customer that buys five of something. One to bake, one to break, one to shake, one to fly, and one to put on the shelf. That does not make a long-term market, right? It, we're, it's, it's amazing to fly something on a NASA mission. When we fly uh, Air Squared on Moxie, these are things that, you, that small businesses that I visited are so proud of the work that they do for NASA. It's a great recruiting tool. It's awesome to get investors. There's a lot of reasons why working with NASA is amazing. But taking those products beyond the NASA marketplace can be really important for a sustainable business plan and strategy for your company. So um, you'll get some other views on that uh, from other agencies over the course of the next couple of days. Um, also, uh, this afternoon, I believe it is, um, you'll hear from, at 3.55 today, you'll hear from Ramona Travis and Janelle Steele, 
on the STTR program in much more depth. STTR, since you have to partner with the university, has some nuances and some things you should consider. It has a higher success rate in phase one, so that's an important thing to note, companies. The selection rate for STTR applicants is higher than it is for SBIR applicants. However, it requires you to find a university partner, and there's some challenges that come with that. So you'll get a deep dive on that this afternoon if you're interested in STTR. So I've told you a lot um, about what our vision is and our purpose for the SBP, SBIR and STTR program, but how do we accomplish that? What are the award vehicles that we make? So I asked many of you earlier, how many of you have a phase one? Well, phase one is basically the award that we make that is for the, uh, the uh, kind of concept study to test your idea that you proposed at phase one. These are short, usually study type activities. Sometimes people submit prototypes with this as well, depending on what the project is. You can do a lot more in six months with 125K if it's a software project than you can if it's a hardware project. So we'll see different things produced by different people at phase one. But uh, SBIR projects are six months, STTR projects are 13 months. The reason STTR is 13 is because again, it requires a university partner. And with like summer schedules and getting research agreements in place. It can take longer to accomplish an STTR. So we give you longer in STTR to do that work at phase one. For phase two, this is where we expect to see a prototype and sometimes multiple prototypes. Sometimes people are even doing flight demonstrations during a phase two, depending on what you're trying to do. So really, um, it's very unique to what technology and idea and company business plan you have, what you can accomplish in each of these phases. But this is a two year uh, prototype activity with up to 750K. Um, it's important to note that it's then we say, now you're magically at phase three, non-NASA funding, you're at commercialization, or non-SBIR funding, you're at commercialization. That's what we tend to call the valley of death. Um, that can be very difficult to move beyond phase two. So we have post phase two opportunities that are available for folks to help bridge that gap. We have an option on the phase two contract called an ENX that Bill Toscano will talk a little bit more about at some point, it's either today or tomorrow, tomorrow uh, morning. Um, we also have a CCRPP program. I did not come up with that acronym. SBA did, so blame Chris for that one. Raise your hand, Chris. Yeah, acronyms. Thanks, SBA. Um, that one's the Civilian Commercial Commercialization Readiness Pilot Program. And for that, we actually make a kind of a second phase two award, but it's not really a phase two award, um, to um, ex phase twos that have ended. Requires you to bring matching funding to the table, and actually uh, proposals for that are we just sent out the announcement for proposals for that are due when, Zach? December? Yeah, sometime in December. Those of you that are eligible for it would have gotten an email about it, but that is open right now, and it's up to a million dollars worth of additional funding for CCRPP. Um, also important to note is we recognize that for many scientists and engineers, me also being an engineer, I was not trained to also be a business person, right? So many of us might have great science and technology ideas, but thinking about how you find product market fit um, to enable you to actually increase likelihood of commercialization for that uh, product might take some additional skills and knowledge, and thus we offer the i -Corp training program in phase one to um, small businesses, both that have worked with us for a very long time, and brand new companies to, tr to train those companies in the lean launch pad methodology to find product market fit through doing deep customer discovery. It forces you to go out and talk to your customers, not just sit in the lab and say, look at this cool thing that I can create if I tinker with the settings on this 25 times. Like it, t it forces you to go out and talk to folks to understand what they actually need to help customize and tweak your development path. And there will be a panel on that also, uh, I think this morning, this afternoon? This afternoon. So what I'm trying to do when I tell you about the other content is give you a, like some narrative about how all this stuff fits together because our program is complicated. I wish it was less complicated, but 36 years of reauthorizations and policy directives and audits and life create complication. And so part of the reason that we are here at events like this is to dis demystify all of those words, all of that complication for you, and to show you in one place all of the different opportunities that are available to you. This is like drinking from a fire hose. You're gonna learn a lot over the next two days. You're not possibly gonna be able to absorb all of it, so don't feel bad if you don't. Um, I've been in the program for two and a half years and I'm still learning. <laughs> so uh, this is a complicated program, but the point of, th of these two days is to help you find, discover at least one or two things you weren't aware of that could help you move towards commercialization and infusion and starting to work with the government through SBIR and STTR. Um, Therese talked a lot about these, as did Steve, but we fund everything NASA does. 
in SBIR and STTR. These are the focus areas from last year's solicitation. I'm sure all of you can look at this and say in some way you see yourself fit in one of these areas in either the business, the business plan that you have or in the specific technologies that you're developing. Um, the best way to start to kind of prepare yourself for next year's solicitation is to go on and look at last year's since our content really only about 50% of our content changes from year to year. Um, there's a lot of similarity across years and solicitations, but there are major changes. So don't just assume because S208, which would be a science mission directorate uh, a customer topic, you'll learn more about this tomorrow morning, since it was in there last year and it's in here list this year, that the content's the same. The focus might have completely changed. It could have been a visible sensor last year and it could be an IR sensor this year that they're looking for. And so you actually have to read the subtopic um, to know uh, what exactly we're looking for from year to year. The other really important note, especially for people that haven't applied yet, we do only one solicitation a year at NASA. You'll find how this is different from other agencies in, in a minute, but we only do one a year. It comes out in January, so mark your calendars. You get one chance a year to apply for phase ones. And so uh, early January, the solicitation will come out. You'll have about two months to get in uh, your proposals uh, in the March timeframe. Um, you can find out a lot more on our website. We will also post on the website uh, after today's events um, on our website, the presentations um, from today. So I know there was a lot of good content in Teresa's presentation that many of you I saw taking pictures. That will be available online um, after the event today as well. And I encourage you to think about that as like customer intelligence gathering, right? When you're starting to think about the broader scope and potential downstream um, opportunities for development of your, um, your technologies. I have just one, uh, two more quick things to say and then I'm gonna invite the panelists up. Um, so the other thing that, you know, we'll talk about different types of companies that work with us through SBIR. But I like to say there's three different types of companies that work with us. One is growth oriented, right? NASA may be a customer, but not the only customer. They're high velocity, they wanna bring products to market. They have lots of customers, growth oriented companies. Um, the other two types are more lifestyle oriented companies. So you can see the lifestyle oriented companies that like type one, wanna be in the supply chain. They wanna be a subcontractor to like a Boeing or a Lockheed or a Northrop. Maybe someday they wanna be acquired by one of those folks, like Aurora was just acquired by Boeing. Note that took like 17 years, right, of working through SBIR, because sometimes, you know, aerospace can be a long, a long process, but that's one type of company that we see work with us quite frequently, Honey, Honey, uh, Honeybee too. Um, folks that become really important suppliers and subcontractors and new small business sources for us at NASA for technology and R&D. Um, the second type of lifestyle company is folks that are really good scientists, bench scientists, technologists. They love to solve problems. You give them a problem, they will figure out how to solve it. They'll give you one prototype. They may have invented something really cool, but they really don't have a desire to patent that or, or, or commercialize it. All of those types of companies have different roles and different value in our program. We see all of those types of companies apply uh, to our program. And so the reason that I say that before I talk about Mentor Protege is that, and where's my timekeeper? Because I could be running way over. Oh, okay, good. One minute, okay, I'm right on track. Um, the Mentor Protege program is a really unique opportunity that Tabby will actually talk a little bit about later this afternoon that talks about how small businesses within the SBIR program um, can partner with NASA Primes, so Northrop Grumman, some of the ones I mentioned before, in order to get mentoring to try to help develop some of those relationships to enter into those subcontractor relationships for the future. So this is a really important, and Lynn was talking about it too. So you guys can hear a little bit more about that. So as I close, I'll just close it with some stats from Colorado. Um, the, over the last five years, we've seen a general positive upward trend of the number of companies proposing from Colorado. Um, and you guys do quite well in our program as well. Um, but we award across the country. Um, and uh, as Therese mentioned, we are consistently looking to make sure that our portfolio is diverse, not just with geographical re representation, but also other underrepresented communities. And so we really, really encourage folks of all geographies and of all backgrounds to apply uh, to the SBIR program. Uh, with that being said, um, I will go ahead and invite up the other agency panelists to join me on stage for the, um, I believe, Bethany, is this the last part of the morning before we break for networking? Yes, so you only have to listen to one more panel. I promise we'll keep it really exciting. If you need to take a bio break, we're all adults. We can do that when you need to. Um, but come back and listen to these guys because they have really, really good um, – 